three, two, one. Welcome to The Peaceful Truth, the podcast where we talk about everything from women empowerment, feminism, and everything in between. You are joined by your host, Kenzie Meekbeck, and a returning guest. Making his triumphant return, Matt to Raddick. The feminist podcast. To the feminist podcast. Keep finally. Inserting yourself into Finally, the we get a man back on this show to, to, you know, really tell it how it is. Really, uh. I feel like my viewers are like, oh. Ugh. <laughs> Let's get this idiot out of here again. <laughs> Is he going to talk about wrestling again? Probably. It'll probably, probably come up. Um, but you're on again. I, I, I thought it was appropriate because we're talking about The Bachelorette again. I'm ready. I've been watching all season. Uh, last last we chat, the, the last time we talked uh, was uh, was the, right before the season started. That's the last time we spoke. The last general. time we've spoken ever <laughs> uh, was uh, was uh, at the beginning of the season. We were kind of previewing things. But now we're, we're deep in the thick of things. Deep. We just had hometowns. Ugh. It what was, are your thoughts? This trip. is your first season of The Bachelorette. Yeah, this is the first time I've really watched it. Because um, um, what's his face was your first one. Colton, yeah, or yeah. Immediately forget men's <laughs> names. Yeah, I guess this is truly my first season of The Bachelorette. Um, I watched bits and pieces of Colton's season, but definitely not the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it feels like this has been a little bit more of a straightforward season. Because, like, I mean, especially the ending of Colton's season, like, went really off the rails. But yeah. There's still there's still some weird stuff going on. Did right you now. have f- fun though? Are you having fun? Oh, I'm having a great time. I it, it is like. It Are is you an, here for the right reasons? I think I'm here for the right reasons. <laughs> no, I I think I'm here for the wrong reasons because I'm just here to like make fun of the clothes that dudes are wearing and uh and laugh at all the, the dumb you're things you're very harsh very harsh the appearances of these guys. Listen, they're on TV. They got they got to step their game up a little bit. I feel like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe try harder. I think they, they, I don't think they're that bad. It's for I've listened to other podcasts and everyone's also railing on their fashion. Yeah. I was listening to uh, The Bachelor Party uh, prepping for this. Same. And they were they were critiquing Tyler C's outfits. And I was like, I thought Tyler C actually had some good looks in this one. I, I but his did. pants were his way pants too were tight. Just, you could see a lot. A lot. A lot was good. You could. It uh, wasn't. Tyler C. wasn't hiding much. Uh, no, it was a little intense. It was like he had those pants for a few years and he was like, oh, I'll yeah, it's still, it's still fine. Yeah. Did I tell you what? This might be repetitive. I don't know if I said this. That's on the fine. Last one. Did I tell you what Rachel did when she was the bachelorette? No, I don't think or so. When, no, when she went on the bachelor. No. Because like the people that are the contestants don't mm-hmm. get like a fund, I believe, hmm. at least at first. They got a BYOC bring mm-hmm. their own clothes which is kind of a lot of pressure there's a lot of pressure i i would not be able to survive um but in that one suitcase mm-hmm. man um but i guess she like walked around to different like local boutiques and businesses and was like i'm gonna be on the bachelorette Dang. do you want to give me some clothes I'm that's so smart i was like wow that's genius yeah and also that's a hey, good like good for their those businesses you know yeah like, that's a good way to get your uh, get your stuff out there yeah i but, like it our favorite before we dive all the way into the bachelor sure yes bachelorette mm-hmm. i was going to talk about your favorite topic right now mm. kind of mm-hmm. the soccer championship yes absolutely the women's world cup it great. should just be the world cup the men's is just the world cup wow wow when you're right you're right <laughs> or at least it should be the men's world cup because it is it, i mean it, it, i can understand a need to differentiate between the two because if they were both called the world cup and it would be it would just be, it would be a little bit it would be a little bit confusing a little bit but it would i agree it should be you know the men's world cup and then the women's world cup yeah be great. so anyway the fifa world cup <laughs> the fifa world cup um or women so the u.s won again i did a they whole did. episode on this did you know that i did, did you? A whole, yeah i didn't i i'm, I'm sorry cool thanks. i missed that one <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Doing so I was doing so well. Um, yeah, I did a whole episode about how, like, it's kind of like, well, it is not kind of mm-hmm. unequal. But, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so we won. Yes, we did. Again. Yeah. There's been a lot of, like, in. I mean, I I freaking love the, 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 the U.S. women's national team. It is, like, the only thing that can inspire true patriotism in me. It's, like, the, only, too. the only time I've chanted USA in, in a long time was watching the championship at a bar the other day. Uh, it was great. I know. I feel like in the progressive side, it's kind of been um, kind of like the past few years. Mm-hmm. I think you can objectively say this, that I feel like people have kind of been bummed out um, if you're, like, against... Oh, if you if you are a, a more like progressive leaning person, yeah, America has been a pretty shit place to live for the past <laughs> couple of years. Yeah, I think that's probably an accurate assessment. <laughs> I 
I try to I don't, be I, I'm impartial. sorry. I forgot what the language barrier was on this show. But you can curse. Yourself. Okay, cool. Um, But, yeah. So, I feel like it did invoke patriotism in yeah. everyone. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the team Hard is... Hard to do nowadays. Absolutely. And the team, like, the team is great, and also they are... They are, are very, very politically outspoken. I mean, like like Megan Rapino, who is my, I love her. She's so great. She's uh, She plays for the Seattle women's soccer team, which is really, really awesome. I need to go to some of their games. You should. They're great. Uh, Have you been? <laughs> yeah. I'm to going, the women's? Yeah. I'm going later in uh, later in July. That's awesome. Yeah. It's going to be great. Um, I'm going to, the, they're doing like a, a, a little like return game for all uh, the players that were in the women's world cup that are coming back. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be really cool. Um, and but I she's, found out two of the women on the team are like engaged. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, I, <laughs> there, I found this video yesterday, uh, that was the, the keeper for us, the women's, uh, the, the goalkeeper. Um, she was like posting like just a ton of videos from like all of their parties and stuff like that, like immediately after the world cup. And she was just like drinking a lot of champagne and having a great time. And then like <laughs> at the end of the night, she's like posting videos with her wife in bed, just being like, we're fucking champions. It's so uh, cool. That like, is so cool. Like relationship goals. Jeez. That's yeah, right. talk about a power goal. Speaking of power couples, Megan Rapino is dating Sue Bird. Sue Bird is like the star player for the Seattle Storm, uh, oh. which is the WNBA team here. Really, they are like the like Seattle sports power couple. They're so great. Um, yeah, and they're and like I mean the great thing about like this team is like that they I feel like didn't pull any punches about their politics or anything like that. Even though they are on this like national stage and like representing America or whatever, like in a lot of ways I feel like they represented the best parts of America and all, all this kind of stuff. And Megan Rapinoe was like you know th- they've been they've been very very vocal advocates for like equal pay um because the pay gap between men and women uh on the u.s soccer in the u.s soccer organization is very very unequal that's what i talked about yeah <laughs> i'm sure you touched on it uh, refer back to episode i forget what number insert episode number here yeah refer exactly. back to episode <laughs> blank. blank um but yeah, it's just like, and then, you know, like she, like someone asked her, like if she was going to go to the White House afterwards and she was like, fuck that. I'm not going to, I'm not I going know. to the White House. And and, and and she also said something. But afterwards. he still tweeted a congratulatory tweet. I mean, hey, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, I'm tr- I, <laughs> my public persona, even though people know what I believe based yeah. on context clues, mm-hmm. I try to be. I got nothing to hide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but a, but a mild mannered occasional podcast guest. <laughs> I got no no punches to pull. Um, but she's I don't know if you saw this either. But she said something afterwards of like like his whole thing was like, well, they have to win before they're going to get an invite to the White House. And she was like, well, I held up my end of the bargain, and I was just like, Megan Rapino, she's so great. She is great. She's just a wonderful person. I love her. Yeah. Um, but they won their final match as like an update against mm-hmm. the Netherlands. And you can correct me if any of these are errors because you literally watched the whole. I did thing. watch the whole game i watched the last five minutes because i woke up wow the, all, all the important parts <laughs> um sorry i'm not a very good representative if i'm being honest like i'm so proud of the team and i'm mm-hmm. super hyped i mm-hmm. probably would have loved to watch the game it was in, in the morning it was <laughs> very it was very very early i did get up very early to go watch but it was really cool i mean obviously seattle is like a like a like a bit of an outlier in terms of the rest of the country but like i was yeah. like waiting in line to get into a bar really at seven in the morning that's like, great there was a line that wrapped around the block to get into this no place way. it was super cool yeah, and there was awesome. like a watch party there there was another one like a, there was a couple of different places in the city it was really really cool yeah i saw a lot of people's stories were actually a lot of people were watching it and yeah. that early um but yeah it's a uh, two to zero was mm-hmm. the final score mm-hmm. megan rapino hit a great penalty penalty kick and then Go ahead uh, and, report and then rose lavelle just hit this amazing goal like she's like she's like that she's the, like one of the younger players on the team she's the future of u.s women's soccer and she had like a couple good chances throughout the tournament she had like a hamstring injury that she was struggling with but then she scored in the final game and it was like the whole like penalty kick with megan rapino like you know they got the goal based on var so it's like it's a very controversial topic mm-hmm. as you know <laughs> and but like i was really glad that rose lavelle was able to score and just like really secure that we that we won it was great. It this was is wonderful. why I really brought you on this episode. So just so I could talk about this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I'm glad to do it. <laughs> it's been really cool to watch like the the attention that like has been brought on like women's soccer in general. I think it, it like blew up this time. It really has. And and it's because of the Me Too movement. I swear. I feel like it's a wave right now. It's like a new feminist wave. Yeah, absolutely. I we're mean, riding it. It's great. It's like <laughs> uh, it's really cool because like the the. It, 
uh, men's soccer in the United States is not very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, European soccer is way better. But like the women's, like the National Women's Soccer League, which is the main league uh, in the U.S. and is the league that the, that the Reign are in. Uh, every player on the U.S. women's national team actually plays in the NWSL. Uh, they're really good. They're the best soccer league in the world, and wow. like they don't get a lot of attention no. at all. You know, nobody goes to Seattle Rain games. They're very, very low attendance. Like they don't get national broadcast television. I but, feel like they might. This well, that's the thing for a is, bit. is a lot of this has changed. Like ESPN just announced that they have a deal. They're covering the rest of the NWSL season. They're showing all of their games on ESPN moving it's a forward. Wave of feminine. Yeah, it's great. Budweiser announced but that they're they had sponsoring to, like, the league. They had to kill it this hard in order well, right. to do it, yeah. which is kind of sad. Yeah, but I mean, it, it is the thing of like, like, uh, sure, like now all these capitalist organizations are trying to capitalize on this wave of of like people, you know, Feminism. doing that. But at the same time, it does bring it to a more mainstream audience. That's what my whole argument. We were actually talking about this with another friend of ours the other day. Um, and sure. we were talking. You're like who? <laughs> um, and we were talking about how. We were like she voiced that she was like and she might listen and be like, what the hell? (laughs) But I think she was trying to voice that she was like, I don't know for sure if it's a good thing that like the women's movement in general and the women's march has become kind of Mm, this thing mm -hmm. where you post all over and kind of um, streamlined. Sure. But like in in my opinion, Mm -hmm. overall, like I know it's not great that people capitalize off of it. I get that. But in a way, that's how culture has changed, and Mm -hmm. that's just how society has Mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, Valentine's Day, it's basically like that's, I don't know. Yeah, no, I I hear what you're saying. I mean, I actually had a conversation with this about something similar with um, someone talking about pride and how like pride has become this very like commodified thing. Oh, it definitely has. Like Seattle business is capitalized on it Absolutely. Like Bud Light is doing like, you know, does like pride cans and stuff like Mm -hmm. that and all this kind of stuff. And I think it's a, it's a, there's definitely two sides to it, right? Right. Like it, sure, it kind of sucks that like people are only getting into this for a profit and stuff like that. But it is speak to something to say that like these movements have become so mainstream that they are something that like, will become a societal be norm. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I th- and I So it, I'm for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I see both sides of it. Like I think that like to to like commodify protest and to like make protest a sort of mainstream thing, like a casual like Sunday brunch activity does do a little bit to like dilute like what protest actually has been historically and it makes it like a less radical movement yeah i know but at the same time like i do think you can have both things right there can be sort of like more radical protests well when it was there it was radical at first right absolutely um yeah i i I totally agree but it's there is something to be said for like i think when i mean to some extent it's like movements get that large and it's hard to like to you know come up with like one solid message for a, a, a population or a group that is that large um but i feel like it's also like there is some extent of like what is the action that we're actually taking like are we just all like getting together to say like you know i mean i don't know there's something wrong with everybody getting together that say that women are awesome like that's that's a really cool right. thing to do too and yeah so as a reminder though they won the last world cup so they defending have, champions yeah they've mm-hmm. kept it um i think that is only the second time that has ever happened that like uh, in back to back yeah that there have been back to back champions in the world cup <laughs> Here, flip really US. really cool see you again <laughs> patriotism um, so as according to CBS news throughout mm-hmm. this world cup, the top ranked, uh, us team, um, ha- had a lead going into halftime of every match that they played. Mm-hmm. So they had, n- there had never been a scoreless. What am I trying to say? They'd never been held scoreless in the first half. Can you explain that? Uh, like it means terms. that in every single game of this tournament, they scored a goal in the first half. They actually like like six of the eight like fastest goals that were scored in the world cup were scored by the u.s um so they just like had this like real big habit of of scoring within like the first 15 minutes of every game which is a pretty like challenging thing to do like everybody's kind of at their freshest at that point um and and they were still able to like score really really quickly and actually the the game against the netherlands was really interesting because it was the first time that they didn't score in the opening 15 uh Mm. and i can't i think that I think that Rapino's penalty kick was at like the 25th minute or something like that, but it was like definitely the most competitive match that they had. And actually both the Netherlands and the U S had not trailed at all in the entire world cup. Like, wow. so it was like, like a legit competitor. Oh yeah, for sure. Like the Netherlands are really good. That's actually, I was reading some stuff at the beginning of the tournament and like, there hasn't been a lot of parody in women's soccer, like 
uh, in the last couple of World Cups. Uh, like the U.S. team is just like far and away leaps and bounds better than any other team in the world. But uh, women's soccer is like apparently developing a lot more strongly like around the world as well. And there have been a lot more like true competitors to the U.S. Uh, that have risen up in the past like a couple of years and things like that. So it's cool. It, 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 yeah. I mean, it's definitely a sport that is like gaining a lot of momentum and attention in the U.S., but it seems like it is also gaining a lot of traction internationally as well, which is really cool. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so this is their fourth World Cup title in the history. So congratulations, They're ladies. basically the best. Yeah. Ever. Forever. Forever They're and so ever good. and ever. I love them. And ever. I can't wait till the next one. 2023. Here we come. Can't wait. Yeah. What country is it in? Couldn't tell you. No. I know <laughs> Put you on the spot. Put me on the spot and I failed. I can tell you where the next Men's World Cup is because that's a problem. <laughs> where is it? It's in Qatar which is a terrible place to hold a soccer tournament in the middle of the summer. So yeah, it's, it's bonkers. How hot is it going to be? Very, is it very, very, very hot. Uh, there was actually like a, I mean, great for their economy. It's, FIFA is very, very corrupt. <laughs> uh, there's like a, no, I didn't mean the FIFA economy. I've been Qatar. Qatari economy. Yeah. Uh, there, I mean, they got a lot of oil money, uh, and that's probably why the world cup is being played in Qatar. That it, much conspiracy. Oh yeah. I think there's a lot of like, uh, I think there's a lot of FIFA folks that are getting some, some money on the side here, but I mean, it is, it will certainly be a boon for the Qatari economy and stuff like that. But there's also, right. they've certainly paid a lot to, uh, get to a point where they would be hosting the world cup anyway i mean they probably are just fine that the u.s is getting more into the women's division because they're like all right more money for us you can be pissed at us and then sure. we'll just put more into it now like we you're watching we don't care yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um okay so back to the bachelorette back to the bachelorette very smooth transition. very smooth transition we are very good i'm trying to look at where the women's world cup is going to be in 2023 and i don't know that it has been established oh but they are going to try and expand it to 32 teams for the next one because there was only 24 teams well yeah because countries are behind for women right. like uh, i mean uh, even though the u.s is like still struggling on equality mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. it's still like across the world it's way worse oh yeah absolutely so and with that are you gonna say? the bachelor <laughs> <laughs> and with that um, okay, so this week's episode, or no, no, not the episodes of The Bachelorette in general. I was just talking about the podcast episode. The episode of the podcast. Um, we are talking about Luke's sex shaming. Mm, yes, we are. Because it's 2019. Let's be sex positive. Please. Yes. Let, yes, let us. Yeah, this has been like, I feel like a major, you know, unfortunate recurring theme of the season this year. I mean, Luke P has been like really the the... the the nucleus, the center of this entire season, and all his shitty stuff. He does a lot of bad things. He's a bad boy. He's a mean boy, and I don't like him. <laughs> he's I'm just a bad gonna come boy. right off the top. He's a bad boy. He's, he's naughty. He's mean. What I have to say is that though, I have a few things to say on him. Yes. I I think it runs very deep. Um, I don't fully like it's wrong what he says and he should learn from it. But I also think it's important to be conscious of where his ideas come from. Mm -hmm. Um, so I blame less of Luke and probably more society for sure. making Luke Luke. Yeah. Um, but, um, I don't want to bully him. I think like this, it might come off that way, but I, mm -hmm. I don't want to shit on him. Like, yeah. I feel like this guy has been through a lot that like, I don't think anyone deserves as much public shaming. I mean, he public shamed someone else, but I'm of sure. the caliber of like, just cause someone hits you, you shouldn't hit back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, so <laughs> Matt's like, so what you're saying is you're really. a much nicer person than I am. <laughs> But, like, but no, I hear what you're saying. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to talk about that. But I just wanted to say that I think in the first episode, I was a little more hesitant on Hannah and I stand mm -hmm. Hannah 100%. Yeah, yeah. I've really grown to love her. She's she's just really great. She's, she's a really nice she's person. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying too. I think that like I, that's like a, a, a question that I've raised internally is like how how reasonable is it to judge somebody off of like uh like i don't know this like, is deep-seated in him right what we're about to talk about right it's exactly his own shame absolutely almost. absolutely and i always like i i often struggle with like is it fair to hold people to 
I don't know, more progressive standards when they might not have access to like the ideas that are surrounding those things like yeah a lot of my be like patient with people yeah. right like a lot of my view of the world and my understanding of the world comes from the fact that like you know i i went to college and i was able to like like be involved in progressive communities and like had access to an education where i could learn about you know progressive ideologies and stuff like that and i don't yeah. think it's fair to i don't think it's always fair to judge people who are not maybe as like familiar with those sorts of things and i don't i don't get the sense that luke grew up in like a progressive community like like, I don't know, like, like ideas of like, l- like consent and sexuality and like the broad strokes of those things and like slut shaming, like are maybe not ideas that were, you know, around, gr- uh, around Luke and his I like, mean, to be honest, I was raised in the South. Right. I don't think all of that was always present either. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, in, in, in the Midwest as well. Like I definitely did not get like a, you know, an education on that kind of stuff when I was growing up either. No. Cause it was, it was more like, um, prey on it and, um, virginity until a marriage um what is that word abstinence only abstinence yeah is like the solution to sex which has proven time and time again and based statistics it does not work does not not to be the most effective strategy um anyway so we'll dive right in that but i love hannah i think she's great i think she's much better than i thought so i apologize and take back the negative (laughs) things all the negative things i thought and felt about her um i think she's great yeah um so yeah so luke's sex shaming so this guy is from where I'm just going to be honest. I feel like stereotypes suck, but sometimes stereotypes are stereotypes because it's like where you come from. And that's why I'm not always mad that when people find out I'm from the South, that sure. they kind of paint me with a broad stroke, a pre, like brush stroke. Cause I'm like, well, yeah, I probably would be like that, but like, sure. I'm sure. not, but like, I feel like Luke did fall into that typical category of right. like a Southern person, um, where it was the Bible mm. belt. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And he felt shame and he was a frat bro. And he's probably one of those people that like when they're exposed to one thing so much that they fall into mm. whatever they're exposed to, mm-hmm. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And like it's like the cult the- mental or the mob mentality type thing yeah 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 totally of like yeah they're they've they've only ever known sort of one experience and so they don't ever like question that or and just kind of go along with it almost like a blind faith kind of thing is that kind Mm -hmm. of what you're saying yeah i feel like he has that stacked against him and Mm -hmm. i'm Mm -hmm. i'm leading into this because i'm going to completely shit on what he says yeah um and i want also to pre to preface it like just saying that like i think Kind of like what's happened in Stranger Things, spoiler mm-hmm. alert, where Uh-oh. you hate, what's his face? I'm really Billy? bad at names. Billy. Yeah. And then you get that insight into it, what he was mm-hmm. exposed to mm-hmm. and you feel some sympathy. Mm-hmm. So I feel yeah. like you got to keep that in mind for every human. Interesting. Interesting. Like, do you, do you feel more sympathy toward Billy? Because I know the other day you were like, no. Well, it's complicated. I mean, it's certainly complicated. It speaks to, again, the fact that, like, uh, young William probably didn't have the most, like, progressive uh, education and, like, upbringing. And, like, it certainly doesn't sound like he had a lot of, like, positive role models in his life where, that were able to teach him, you know, right from wrong or anything like that. Uh but at the same time, like, I do feel like he kind of sucks. And he's like, he not does. a good guy. I'm not defending him. I'm just saying that there is a reason why people are the way they are. Sure. Yes. There's things that lead up. And yes. the side effects of society lead up. That is true. To these things. So anyway. Yeah. If people it's are just hard to say. Power, well, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely true. Um, they, uh, it just, you know, I, I. People are the way that they are because of experiences in their life, sure. But like, they, I do feel like they're, I don't know. There I also are don't feel like there's people it. that are like beyond redemption or anything like that. Like, I, I like agree. That's not what I'm saying. I guess I just no. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm criti- criticizing myself of it. being like I was going to say that like you know just because you had like a bad upbringing doesn't give you like a sort of license to do like you know bad things or anything uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, and I think that I don't know people. I don't know. It's, it's very co- it's very complicated. It's very complex. Yeah. Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> so, this is not a Stranger Things podcast. Yeah. So I feel like Luke P, he's sexist. And he, I also think that there might be something like chemically off. I feel like his personality might have like, there might be something there. Yeah. But I also feel like he is like, because he has a lot of rage, but he ha- also sure. has like toxic masculinity themes and as well as like slut shaming tendencies Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. and he's also like a master manipulator which i personally think that's like a sign of 
a chemical imbalance to like have no guilt and remorse and consciousness that sure. you're manipulating another sure. people. Yeah, I mean, I'm hesitant to like uh, like comment on anybody's. I know, know, chemical I know, wherewithal I know, like but that. I feel like there's something off. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's like there is definitely something to be said for the fact that like he is, uh, like, so far as we can tell, completely unaware of how he is being like perceived by other people and doesn't perceive anything that he's doing as like wrong or or like inappropriate or you know could be taken the wrong way or anything like that like he has that like that entire mentality that like he is right and he is doing nothing wrong and everybody else around him is like is crazy in the wrong right exactly which i think like that does indicate that he's at least got uh, very poor judgment. Uh, <laughs> what the cause of that is, I, I couldn't speculate, but yeah. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't speculate, but I did. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so at the first part, the first time we kind of see this type of behavior in Luke is when he finds Hannah at her most vulnerable moments. Mm-hmm. The first one being in the one of the first episodes, I think it was the first episode, um, where he finds her after that first guy finds out that that first guy had a girlfriend Mm -hmm. beyond (laughs) Jed. Yeah. It's a whole different story. (laughs) And like, as soon as he finds out Hannah's upset with that, Luke goes in and he seems like the good guy at first because he's like swoops in and kind of capitalizes on that Mm -hmm. moment. But I think if you kind of watch that back, you can kind of see how he's, he is always behaving how he thinks he would like women would want him to act. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I feel like they kind of touched on that a little bit in, I I forget where they, I think it might've been Scotland. At some point she gets a one-on-one and she like tries to talk to him and is like, like, just tell me what you're actually feeling. And it kind of, it like exposes the fact that he is just constantly saying like what should be said or what needs to be said or something like that. And yeah, I feel like, I, I there was not something I really like re- recognized until like that moment, but looking back on it, it is like he he's definitely like playing the game, right? Like he he like knows when when is the right time to yeah. like you know talk to this person and try and comfort this person, and I'm gonna say the thing that like that like should someone should say in the situation, not necessarily like what. And that's is, just his conjecture, like his best guess of what someone yeah, should say. Yeah, which exactly. Sometimes I think. He, he says things wrong. Like if he mm-hmm. phrased it in a different way, it might not be as horrible as everything seems. Yeah. Right. Um, but he first uh, like hinted, um, at w- he finds, I think he's projecting on Hannah in this okay. slut shaming thing a little oh, bit. I think he is toxic masculinity where he thinks he's the man and like he, the woman should be pure coming into the relationship. Yeah, right. And I think that's like his idea of it. But it, I feel like he's also self projecting where he's like, Oh, I was so terrible because I was sexually mm-hmm. active. And yeah. I think he felt guilt in that. Yeah. And he was like, uh, because he was raised in this community probably. And he's mm-hmm. like, kind of probably realized one day, Oh shit, this isn't what I was raised with, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so he finds God in the shower, um, which he brings up multiple times yeah. and decides he should no longer, uh, be having sex before marriage. Yeah. And I just think he's projecting. On yeah. Hannah. I think, I mean, he told the story, he's told the story twice on the show now and like he delivered it like almost exactly the same way, like both times, which that, that to me was also like a big sort of red flag of like this guy, I think he knows what he's doing, uh, in terms of like being a manipulator and stuff like that. Like in the, in the episode before last, he finally like, he like told, he like mentioned the story in his, in the very first episode, the episode before last, he like, he finally told Hannah the story directly and she was like, oh wow, that's amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Here's a rose, all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then he told it again when he was like doing the hometown thing this week and it was delivered the exact same way, like both of those two times. Like he, he, you know, he like talks about like, I just had this weight lifted off of me. Like you could cut those two like storytelling things together. I think you could. Very seamlessly. I agree with you. I was like, wow, deja vu. We just heard this right um okay. but yeah i do think that that speaks to like a lot of like sort of internalized like shame and guilt and stuff like that like it yeah. seems like he's he's really struggling with that and i, I mean i don't know if like, i guess his only way to process that is to like project that outward it's not, it's not and again it's not healthy, like i but. don't like to bring all my things too too much but i'm just saying i find it sad that people like it's a natural thing for people to feel sexuality and sure. they just hate themselves for it. i like feel that's sad. like i'm sad for him yeah uh, he mm-hmm. hates himself about i mean yeah absolutely 
Um, so then Garrett, where we really start to Mm. see this behavior and where it becomes blatantly obvious is when, and when I like, I, I get why they didn't like Luke at first, but I feel like this is when I was pissed at Luke. Yeah, I agree. Um, when Garrett, one of the contestants had a (laughs) naked, (laughs) naked, he had a naked bungee. He got he got naked and they jumped out of. Him. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! A naked bungee jumping. Yes. One and a uh, one-on-one date one-on-one and date. Uh, Luke's post freak out to that one-on-one was like one of those. So this was like two or three episodes ago at now mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we just went through hometowns. So yeah. this was a bit ago. This was in Latvia, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they try to say Which it was like a very a, interesting a Latvian yeah. uh tradition. Yeah, very interesting. Don't but know much the about the travel Latvia. tour sports, I'm pretty sure like pitches pitch themselves to oh, ABC. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Just like Qatar to the to the to FIFA. Wow. We brought it back around. Way to bring it back. Yeah. If only we had sponsors, then you <laughs> could bring it back that way. Shouts to Qatar. Uh thanks for sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> I'm like now I'm oil money all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get that News oil money. News to me. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, it, th- this was, I think when it became like really, really clear that like, I mean, this was the first time that he really like shamed Hannah for, for any sort of like behavior or anything like that. It was like, it's, it's so interesting because like their relationship was pretty sexual, like from the beginning, like they had like some very yeah. intense, like making out stuff going on. Where his episode, shirt comes off. Shirt comes off. There's a massage, massage situation. And, and Jed walks in. Poor Jed walks in. He's uh, just trying to play his guitar and he's, he's, <laughs> he's just, like, I, man, I just, I'm just trying to be famous. I was trying to take my shirt off and play guitar and now you beat me to it. Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. I thought I was going to get famous. Uh, but yeah, th- like I, it, it's weird, like how quickly that like caused a turn in him. Like, I guess that to me made made it seem like this is not like a sort of like, this is not an, like, I don't know. There's a lot about Luke that I feel like could be construed as like, he's like putting up a front. He's like acting, right? Like he's like not actually this person. He's trying to play a character, but like that reaction wow. was like so real. I just felt, I just feel like it's very deep seated. I don't think. Yeah. That's I, th- I mean, I think it's like a little bit of both. I think he's a manipulator. Yeah. Right. But I don't think he's a character. I think that's who he is. Yeah. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't like think he's I, that smart to develop a character like that. Fair enough. I I think like like he was like trying to play this role of like the perfect guy, right? He's like, oh, this woman is sad, and you know she like just had to like send home this or send home this guy because you know found turns out he has a boyfriend. I know girlfriend, what to do. Yeah. A girlfriend, yeah. To I know it's. I'll to be do. though a fun take. On that would the be a, that would be a hot twist. Um. The, the, she was like the like the I know what to do like oh I should go comfort this person right like I can play this like nice guy the sweet guy and I can like you know like I guess I don't know that he was like thinking about it that way but he's like this is the right thing to do in this situation right and then he had this moment with Garrett where he had such a strong reaction to it where like he couldn't react any other way than to be the sort of like bad guy and be like I need to like tell you I'm and i just like want to point out like luke you were like liter- literally wearing pretty much the same amount of clothing well, i'm pretty yeah. sure it was really a slater that garrett and hannah both had undies on uh, oh yes it was yeah she said like she in an instagram post she was like in an instagram post like that, she's like i wore underwear the entire show or something like that yeah i like so, half-assed a southern accent there for a minute. you did it didn't even it come was, across it wasn't, it wasn't good <laughs> It was bad. Um, so here's one of his quotes mm. after the naked bungee jumping. He said, and maybe you can analyze the quotes after I read them. Sounds great. I don't think I can imitate his voice, though. So I'm not going to try. Yeah, I don't know if I could either. He says, I'm shocked. Just the sheer fact. I mean, this is a woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Which, first of all, he's just all wait to come. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of my life with and totally thought that was crossing the line. First yeah. of all, just assuming that that's his wife because right. he wants it. Right. I mean, he says, this is someone I want to spend the rest of my life with. It's it, he, That is something he can desire. He is. A, yeah, I'm just pissed at him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree. It's not great. But the point of the sentence is the crossing the line part. So right. who determines what line she's crossing? Is it Hannah or is it him? It's it. Yeah. I mean, it seems like that's, yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's like, that's the implication there. It's like, I, I, Luke, determine the boundaries for, or determine what, like, the lines are. Her body's boundaries boundaries are. are. Yeah, absolutely. 
and that's the whole theme of our country, Aaron. Wow. Wow, hot, so. hot take. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, the gloves are coming off. Of this week, Hi, sorry. Um, um, and then he, for this part really got me heated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's telling her what her body is. Yeah. First of all, mm-hmm. do not tell me what my weapon <laughs> body is. Um, like her body is a temple and to expose it to anyone who isn't her husband, that was a slap in the face. Yeah. It's fucked. It's messed up. It. I mean, like... For I mean, for starters, like she has, well, I guess I don't know. I guess she didn't really take off her clothes when they were like na- ma- making out and getting massages and stuff like that. But still, like he is saying that They're basically like, dry humping. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> and he's like taking off his shirt like every chance he can get on the Stang Show. Like, is his body not a temple that 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 like can be exposed to other people? Is it not a slap? And what in the makes face? like exposing your body make it less of a temple? Yeah, well, that's very true. And having sex less of a temple. Yeah, right. If like if yeah. Uh, I can choose how people worship <laughs> in and around this temple. Thank you. That's my point. I think it's a flawed statement. It is. I'm absolutely. actually being serious. I'm I, like, yeah, I agree. With the you. definition of temple is flawed. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Do like, not tell like a woman what she can or can't do. Like the woman owns her own body, and right. so she can determine what goes in her temple. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely right. Like it, it is. It, I mean, it is very much like a like. It's interesting because that is that is like a line, right? Like a like a that is a, a line from like something. He's from, heard. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, I I don't I I don't think that's a thing in the Bible. I'm not a religious scholar, but like it Isn't is a very temple. Not even a Christian well, term. Yeah, I think it's technically like a uh, a, a Judaism tour, uh, a Jewish term. Um, but like like uh, I, th- I mean that is certainly a line from like religious communities, right? Your body yeah. is a temple, and so to like just like regurgitate that and project that onto somebody. I feel like else that's more like of the a... yoga community. Is it's it talking really about d- be doing yoga? Wow, and being meditative. I don't know shit about it's not, yoga. It's not talking about like not having sex. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I feel like this comment overline has a theme where it's overly possessive, manipulative, and yeah. controlling. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, like, like. I think your your points about like her his assumption that you know he is already like basically her husband and she is basically his wife and all that kind of stuff it's 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 a very presumptuous and it also speaks a lot to like how he would like, treat a wife exactly like like it's a, his like possession a, yeah his feelings about what marriage should be and and how it should be possessive and and all that kind of stuff. Which is is bad and fucked and not good <laughs> and is a very 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 because bad we're married your body is now my body yeah exactly <laughs> no that's not, that that ain't how it works chief um anyway um and then he goes on to say he has so many bad quotes it's very cringy the yeah. whole thing I was like raging the whole time but she, he says if she is really the one for me which I believe she is there's a lot of answers that I need I have to say something sure yeah yeah it's uh. I mean, yeah, that that like speaks to the internal conflict that he has about all this to me, like to to say that, like, because he is sort of questioning, like, I feel very strongly for this person. But also something I believe is that, like, a woman should a woman should be chaste (laughs) for me, uh, which is not a good I, I think that is a that is a flawed, flawed idea. Uh, and, and like, he, he clearly has some ideas about like, 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 I don't know, purity or something like that, that like he cannot get, which I get it. I've heard these lines that he's reciting. So it was drilled into his brain at some point, but this is where I fell in love with Tyler C. Mm. Mm -hmm. This was the moment. Mm-hmm. It wasn't when he was dancing in his construction site. No, I don't even remember him. Like, to I'm be the only person. <laughs> everybody I've talked about this does no recollection of I this. I mean, but. to be honest, like sometimes when a guy is like overly jack like that, it's just like kind of those things where you glaze over. I don't know <laughs> if guys, men, I don't, I don't feel like straight men may, maybe feel the same way, but it's like when I see a Victoria's Secret model, I'm like. Interesting. All right, she's like super hot. Like that's what you predict out of a Victoria's Secret model, that type of body. So Interesting. it's just like this guy's on the bachelorette not a shocker that he's like built like that mm-hmm. i'm just like mm-hmm. all right mm-hmm. interesting i so actually I didn't notice him that's very before this moment fascinating i the bachelor party was talking about this too like she loves him she does yeah uh, yeah she's a big fan Juliet of Tyler loves Juliet him. Lemon. she loves him uh but like her and jacoby were on this this episode and they were talking about like like there's like a level of like 
uh, like a guy can become like too muscly. And then it's just like the question then becomes like, like, like how, like it suddenly reveals a lot about someone's character when they're like as muscly as like Luke or Tyler is. Cause it's like, okay, this is like a big part of your life. No, and, it is. And like, this is like a central I mean, I've seen it. part of, of who you are. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I never really thought about the fact that there's like a, there's like a, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of like, like, uh, like, I don't know. There's certain male bodies that are certainly idealized as well. And I feel like it's like those get put up on a pedestal and it's like, if you're not those things, like, but women have a different brain. So I'm pretty like being from a heteronormative, uh, perspective and just being from a straight perspective, I just, Sometimes I just like any Chip and Dale dancers, like any type of like, I don't know, like perfectly sculpted dude. I'm just like, cool. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. It's just like, it's uh, like, it, I don't know. It's, it, it's, I think <laughs> probably speaks to like a flaw in my character that like I'd never had really like processed that there was like a, I don't know, like a, like a, like a line there, right? Of like, like, oh, this is not like, like the, 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 there is a line where this goes too far and this person is like, I don't know, too perfect or too sculpted or too muscular. Or anything yeah. Like that. Like, I feel like, it's, I don't it's, know, at a point I would just be like, this just feels like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, like I would feel a lot like, I don't know. Yeah. It's almost unattractive. At yeah. A right. Point. Right. I think it was just like a moment of like, like, I feel like those are like, I, I like, I feel like I've looked at the, the flawed sort of beauty standards in, in women, right? And, like, how, like, that has been, uh, like, overly commodified. And, and, and the, I, I feel like I've thought and read about, like, the pressures that women are under and things like that. But I haven't – this was, like, a moment where I had, like, thought about the male side of things. And I was, like, there's also a lot of perspective, like, a pressure mm-hmm. that we are under. And it's interesting that, like, like those standards are also, like – and then all and that's, uh, not necessarily like all like, women think like oh hey yeah that's exactly great. yeah exactly i don't know it was like a eye-opening moment anyway I, most women that i know like when a chip and deal like dancers are they're like Ugh. It's, too, it's too much yeah not not interested yeah it's fascinating so but anyway right. tyler he's anyway. uh he's got muscles so uh, he's, but he he's also handsome. has thoughts. he's a great he's a great guy but then he brings out his brain and you're like wow whole pack <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Sold to me. Um, as we're talking about bad stereotypes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's fine. Um, so before, like, he, his personality, I think, on this one-on-one on around this time, too, yeah. he says some really deep things, and mm-hmm. you're just like, where is this coming from? Yeah, right, right. Because um, he was pretty, like, kind of a dark horse in this season yeah. where he comes up out of nowhere a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but he says... Here's his quote, and he's like, and he's sticking up for her when like Luke's venting about how pissed he is about the naked bungee jumping. He goes, yeah. "Here's where I differ, though, um, is that I actually respect and love that she went for it. She's making her own decisions. She's not making decisions for anyone but herself. Let her go and have these experiences and live them to the max. She's living Riga to the fullest." Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. It's a it's a great line. This this I feel like was like peak Tyler of like like it was, but he, I fell in love with them, and it doesn't matter yeah, <laughs> what right. happens now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, this is, I mean that that I think is absolutely like the right approach to this. I think especially when you are all like in an experience like this, right? Like there there are thirty men here that are all vying to be with this one woman, and like they're all like reaching for the same goal. Like they're all I don't know. It's like kind of like a crazy weird like polyamorous relationship right like like she's dating all these people at the same time they're all very very aware of it they all know each other they all know about it like how can you go into that and expect that her to be like you know only saving herself for you or something like that like she should be like absolutely living her life and and having the experiences that she wants to have and if she's happy and enjoying herself then great like tyler's the most mentally well rounded and like well i don't know about that but (sighs) I think that that I think that dear Tyler has some. Oh, wow, what are you gonna say? I just about think the love of my life. <laughs> I think that he has some emotional baggage that I think he still needs to unpack. He said something yeah. about like this like last relationship that he was in, and he hasn't really been able to like let go and move on, and like he's been afraid to like get close to someone again. I don't know. These I, are normal things that people go through. It's very very normal. I'm saying that Luke is yeah. an extreme of a negative i don't absolutely if i i i feel like everyone has a little bit of shit that they've gone through yeah absolutely so anyway um, i just gotta take tyler down a peg 
<laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, so gorgeous line. He recognizes that it's her own decisions and she's her own person. It's mm-hmm. her body and he loves and respects her and she's living in the moment. Love it. Love it. Great. Che- kudos to you, Tyler. <laughs> Great right. stuff. So um, those were comments like he made that were leading up to him like being angry. But where it comes to the surface it was where he actually confronts Hannah and pulls mm-hmm. her aside for what he thinks. And his following comments are this equal Luke, right? or even worse. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, okay. um, so he pulls her aside and he's going to tell her exactly what he thinks. Yeah, right. About her naked bunch. Can't wait. Can't wait to hear this, Luke. Okay, so I'm going to read these quotes. Um, Can't wait. He says, I'm going to be honest, you're not going to like this. Mm -hmm. So this is the one part where I'm like, I I usually am a a person that has a lot of sympathy, but this is the part where I'm like, he knows he's about to say some bullshit. Right, right, yeah. He's pretty conscious of it. Yeah, he's absolutely aware that like what Um, he's saying is like a flawed and backwards idea. It does show show consciousness. Yeah. Here. But but to be like, I'm conscious of this fact, and I'm going to completely ignore that it's messed up anyway. Eh. It's a little flawed. Yeah, and he goes on where, and you just mentioned this, but he's going on about how he's like asking her leading up as if he's going to reveal some vulnerable story that yeah. he's just trying to open up about. He's like, have you ever been cheated on? And mm-hmm. she's like, solemnly says yes. And you can tell it hurts her because she kind of just says yes very quickly yeah. and short. Mm-hmm. And he was like... Um, well, that's how I felt today. I'm like, dude, you're, you signed up yeah, for a right, dating right. show with 30 dudes. Like I have no sympathy for that part. Yeah, no, not at all. I, I, I totally agree. Like you, you knew what you signed up for and, and th- this was the experience. I also I understand f- you being uncomfortable watching it if you like someone. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is it something that I want to like, do I want like thrown in my face? Probably not. So I feel like, I feel like if I were Jed, for example, and I walked in and saw this girl that I'm get, developing feelings for making out with someone else, that would suck. But I would be like, you know, I signed up for this experience. I can't like, you're not doing anything wrong. You have not broken the social contract that we have established here. Like I knew what I was getting into. Yeah. This show sets the boundary. Like yeah, exactly. relationships are about boundaries. And this, the whole concept of this show is an extreme boundary line. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, they're cra- they're, they're, they're bonkers boundaries, but yeah. like they, they are established. There are rules. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, and Hannah does like stick up for herself and knows that it's like her choice. And, and when he like starts to shame her about it, she just goes, no, I know the choice I made. Yeah. Right. And I had fun. And I made it anyway. Yeah. She's like, I don't give a shit what mm-hmm. you're saying, but she is pretty quiet through the rest of it. I think she's just in shock. I think like, she's, yeah. Shit, like upset what do I... and pissed. Yeah. Um, so she's trying not to explode probably, but she's mm-hmm. like, um, and he thinks he's about to be supportive. Right. He thinks this is a solid line that yeah, he's about yeah. to say. He says, no matter what you do, I'm going to support you, even if you make a boneheaded mistake. Yeah. This was honestly like the the the, the biggest thing that stuck out to me. Because it, it was like a way, like, it's, it's, it's again him trying to be that, like, nice guy, trying to be that exactly. sweet guy. Yeah. But at the same time, like like giving a completely backhanded insult to to be like oh it's uh, like i totally support you no matter what dumb fucking thing you do i totally support you like that's then you're a, not supportive no exactly you're still you're still passing judgment you're still making you're being just passive aggressive exactly yeah and it's uh, that's it's like the word that is like the most like worst gross kind of manipulation yeah he he's saying she's dumb in his opinion yeah and irresponsible but she's not she's making her own choices yeah they right. didn't do it like yeah right it's fine. <laughs> and even if they did whatever i mean bungee jumping is maybe not the most responsible thing you could do you probably get hurt bungee jumping naked seems like could maybe be a painful and, and like potentially bad experience but like if you want to do it it's fine <laughs> yeah go for it exactly just sounds awful to me and it was like pretty much snowing that's my yeah, main right, concern right. <laughs> like i'd be cold as hell cool um so yeah and then he's belittling her in that comment as well yeah absolutely. the next comment that's bad in this converse same conversation is and so if you do something that's completely out of your character and that's wrong so he's mm. saying like mm. that her sexuality is wrong yeah and he's also claiming that he knows and defines her own character and it's not within her power to decide. Yeah. He's just gaslighting her in yeah. this whole scene. Absolutely. He's saying, like, I know you better than you know yourself. Like, I know she's saying, like, I did this, yeah, and it was fine. And I was fine. And I thought it, I thought it was cool. I thought it was fun. And he's saying, like, no, I actually know you better than that. And I know that what you were doing was not what you wanted to be doing. That's yeah, that's a pretty like yeah, gross, flawed thing to be saying. 
but Hannah comes Yuck. back. But Hannah comes back. After she thought that at first. <laughs> this is she mine. Said, it's like you, she gets like the perfect opportunity though. Like where you get to clap back at someone and you get to think of your comeback. Yeah, right, right. But she still gets because it because like, it's edited together. Yeah. And she's like, I mean, she's running the whole show. So she can, uh, at any moment, I feel like, just like turn to a producer and be like, excuse me, I need a minute. And then like go like formulate her thought and then come back and be like, I've got it. I've got the perfect line. And then come sit back down. They get the camera set up exactly where they were. And then she just delivers the perfect thing. It's great. What an ideal situation. I know. If only I could like not think of it three days later and be like, damn it. If this could be my life. Um, so she comes up to him later, pulls him aside and Mm -hmm. she said, uh, she doesn't like his language. And she said it was like a liberating experience. It wasn't a sexual one for her, which even if it was, she shouldn't even be defending that part. Sure. Um, but then she goes on to say that it doesn't matter at this point, but she's right. Because even if it was sexual, they aren't in a monogamous relationship because they're fucking on the bachelorette. They are fucking on the bachelorette. (laughs) You know what I meant? Not literally. I mean, probably. <laughs> um, but he said he started it in the worst way possible, but he was conscious of him starting it in the worst way possible. Right. He said that from the back. beginning. Yeah. Um, we have receipts, Luke. We have receipts. And I rewatched it like three <laughs> times and wrote down your verbatim words. Um, but he was and says uh, she's twisting his words, which mm-hmm. is not true. And he claims then he goes back on everything and crawls back. He's like, I wasn't talking about bungee mm-hmm. jumping. And literally, that's what he was yeah. pulling her aside yeah. for. Literally, that's exactly what he was pulling her. Yeah. That, uh, that's, again, like the, the sort of master manipulator stuff coming into me. Like like to, to try and make the argument that you are twisting words or something like that is like it's a way of cutting down her argument. Right. And mm-hmm. saying like, like, oh, like that's not actually what I said. You're just misinterpreting. It's gaslighting. It is. Yeah, absolutely. And then to, d- to deny that, like, that's even what they were talking about when clearly they were. Like that's that's just that's you just, just felt guilty because you got caught. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, she doesn't stand for his crap, which doesn't is another, stand for it. Another thing I like. Love, um, it. Love to see it. But later they go on a three on one with Garrett, Peter, and Luke. Mm. Um, I do. Yeah. So um, Garrett, I feel like has gotten into it a few times with Luke, yeah. and in the past there's been a lot of focus on the drama one because of the bungee jumping thing. I feel like set yeah, that president. Right. right. So um, Pete stays out of it, which is great. Good old pilot Peter. You know, he's flying the straight and narrow. He is staying on the train staying, tracks. You no, know, he's a pilot, not a conductor. I know, but haven't you heard their references where they're like, stay in your lane, man. And oh, yeah. Like, if I'm driving. <laughs> and then they go into this weird car metaphor and you're like, guys, it's a little past. Like, I mean, it's got to be like, we, it's got to be purely plain metaphors. You know, he's flying the fl- stay in the course. Fly. He's a good pilot. That's. On their hometowns this past week was hilarious though because yeah. she's like he knows how to like <laughs> work a cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. That was so good. Oh uh, boy, so good. Um. Okay. So anyway, um. Yeah. So it basically becomes a two on one because she's yep. just like, okay, I can tell Peter's not giving any shit, so yeah. I'm gonna give you a rose. See you later, Peter. Yeah. Get out of my hair. Which, which is which something is I would do. Like great. I would be like, you're cool. You got a rose, honey. Yeah. Go home. Like um, honestly, kudos to Peter you, for just being yourself. like, like you know, and I'm he gonna, stays I'm out of it. Stay out of it. I'm not gonna get into this business. I'm just here to hang out with Hannah. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna have a great time. I'm gonna be very nice. I'm here to copy my parents' marriage. I'm a good, sweet boy that's just trying to live exactly <laughs> my parents' life. Can't wait to grow a mustache like my dad. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's nothing be wrong great. with it. I mean, if that's what you want. Um, yeah. So he shows a lot of rage and is yelling and uh, he's not controlling his own emotions, which mm. I think shows toxic masculinity. You think this is Luke is showing a lot of rage here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, for sure. a red flag for a partner. For sure. Yeah. He like really, really loses his cool. I mean, like, I think that we talked about this a little bit. Like, I think that like Garrett getting under his skin is um, pretty funny. <laughs> uh, it's and funny, but it's he, Garrett's a bully. I, well... I, I think mean, he is. Yeah, I, I think he is. I, 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 I don't disagree, but I also like. I feel like what, like what, like, I mean, Luke completely got in in Garrett's business with all this stuff. Like, like everything that he says in this whole situation is like directly an attack on on Garrett, and like I is know. trying I, to cut I him down. I and think I think I it's get like fuck that boy vibes from Garrett. 
Well, okay, don't get me wrong. There are some strong fuckboy vibes coming from Garrett. Like he, I don't think he's a great guy, but I think there's maybe this Precedent. is a flaw in my character, but I think there's something very inherently funny about like some guy who is for clearly very angry at you, like just reacting to him so sarcastically and just doing all the things to like get under his skin and stuff like for that. For sure, but I mean, and it's probably been for weeks. Is so it makes nice? Time. No, it's not very nice. But like sometimes petty. you should be mean to mean people. Petty. Sometimes you should be petty with mean petty. people. I don't know. No, but um, but uh, oh god, what was I gonna think of? Oh, the five foot eight villain comment from <laughs> Tyler C. I was like, Tyler, so funny. That was rude. I mean, like. Again, I don't feel like Tyler actually gives a shit about how tall people are, but he knows that that's something that's going to bother Luke. And I think it's really funny just to be like, let me get completely under this guy's skin. This guy who's clearly so like insecure and is acting out that insecurity by just like lashing out at people all the time to like, I guess it's not very nice, but it's fun. It is funny. <laughs> I laughed a lot when he says it's about the thing about the five foot eight villain. <laughs> <laughs> but I did see a lot of memes on the internet that like compared him to um, the Shrek character. <laughs> What's the villain's name? I know L- I told Lord you about Farquaad. That. Lord Farquaad. Uh, yeah. re- resident Shrek scholar uh, Matt Raddick in the room here. Uh, it's classic um, piece of American cinema. Uh, oh, it's good. Yeah, it was good. Um, but I, yeah, I feel like hometowns weren't that noteworthy in mm. this um, regard to the specific topic. I think hometowns was a great episode overall. Solid episode to play Angry Birds throughout. But <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't know. There was something about like seeing how deep seated this stuff is with Luke was and like, with Hannah. I think that's Hannah, what's. Yeah. That was going to be my point about this hometown and what we saw with Luke. I think the reason, and and I think I told you this, I think the reason that Luke or Hannah is attracted to Luke because she, in her ideal world, would love a man that brings out her Christianity yeah, in her. Yeah. And so I feel like in her ideal world and her ideal self, and what she idealizes is, oh, this man would make me a good Christian woman mm-hmm. and uh, we could have that partnership together, which is great if it's something you desire. But I know a lot of Christian people that are not like Luke P. Sure. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> there are other ways to get to there this. There are path, other ways to get there. Um, so a lot of great people that would <laughs> never approach it this way. But yeah. like... So I think that's what she's seen in him. And it's her own shame that she's like letting him have those yeah. feelings toward her. Cause I think she feels shame too, because yeah. she was probably raised in a similar environment. Right. Well, I mean, I, I wonder how much she sort of like empathizes with Luke's journey of like, you know, I like, I mean, she has, I, I, I wonder if she still has that sort of internalized idea of like, you know, Again, this sex is, is wrong, maybe. Right, exactly. Like th- this is this is me, like you know, projecting a certain stereotype. But like you know, I grew up in the South, and I was taught that marriage is between a man and a woman, and it is something that is in the eyes of God, and it is like chaste and pure and things like that. And maybe you know, Hannah has been on The Bachelor, and she has like you know, it, she has had sex and stuff like that. And maybe she feels like she has strayed from that path. And this is someone who, you know, Luke is someone who she believes has like strayed from that path as well but has like found her way back into like the but honey, you were a sexual being and she likes sex. Uh, yeah. Her, I mean, right. Like, like, right. Her, she should, she should she, embrace she clearly that. Clearly has a lot of sex drive. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Poor girl. She, she loves to straddle I anything. Mean, I mean, we've seen, we've seen what's going on with Peter. We've seen a lot of what's going on with Tyler. Like we've seen She's, what's going on. Has with a high sex right. drive. She's a sexual which is person. Natural. Absolutely. Like, and she shouldn't feel sad. Yeah. Like that's the thing that they, I but feel that's like that's why he's on. That's my theory. That's why he's on. That's why he's still here. Because she she feels that. It, it is it's it's really interesting to me because I feel like the initial connection that they had was sexual and was physical. You know, like she was she seemed very impressed by his body. His his body and his massages and his ability to make out uh, like from the beginning and like but now I feel like she's like I think that's what she 
what she sees when she says like she sees a deeper side to him is like she sees this faith and this like his his like closeness with god and in a lot of ways like the hometown's experience like reinforced that because like right so much of what they did was like around his religious community they went to sunday school together um they uh they like you know their family clearly was like very religious there was a lot of like there were like crosses on the wall and all that kind of stuff and and clearly like faith is a big part of their lives as Mm -hmm. well um and so i feel like it like reinforced like oh yeah this is i want to be with like a good southern christian family and this is a good southern christian family and this yeah is a good it almost southern was christian a good man. date for her in yeah. her eyes because she was like yeah you're right this is what i want exactly or at least what maybe this is what she thought she wanted right exactly she's like this is this is a picture that i have seen in my life as something and that as I a kid do. i thought that's what it was yeah as a young person and now oh wow this is a chance to fulfill that picture and and to to paint myself in that light that I always saw myself in like she could she could very well be saying to herself this is how I always saw myself and this is a way to get there and that's great it is okay to be different you can move to Jupiter Florida and live on a boat with Hilly. Tyler C and put on sunscreen all the time yeah you can massage it into his abdominals exactly every day. A- anytime you want you could go move to LA and although fly Tyler plane. C really lives in New York I, That's just I, I heard that recently. It's very interesting. Tyler I follow C. follow him on Insta. So. Oh, do you? I do. One of the 800,000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, but a preview for next week's episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is only going to come to like a further ahead. point. Yeah. So um, it shows she took a uh, spoiler alert. Yep. Right? Yep. She mm-hmm. takes all four. She takes all four. This is... Which Crazy. you can tell Chris is like, Jesus Christ. This is a, like the, this is unprecedented, right? Yeah. But I think this is good for the franchise, in yeah. my opinion. Even mm-hmm. though Chris looks a little annoyed, I think he's annoyed at Hannah, not at like her decision. Right, right. Um, I don't think he's a Hannah fan based on his body language. I don't think so um, yeah. But, which, whatever. Um, but um, I think it's good for the franchise for them to break rules in different ways every time because yeah. it will keep the show spicy. Absolutely. I so. think the future of this show is continuing to break the norm. I think they saw that. Uh, we discussed this the first time we talked about The Bachelorette. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what they saw with Colton. That's what they saw with Ari. So if, one, if anything, this is the norm exactly wow. <laughs> wow i know what if if change is the norm it's unbelievable wow great th- great point Kenzie. deep Very okay deep so anyway luke goes past hometowns um and yes in what looks like greece they go to greece they do go to greece which jealous really want to go to greece yeah me too seems great <sighs> beautiful those cool. buildings that area the blue rooftop. those beaches great. get oh, out of yeah. town Great. Um, so he claims he knows Hannah and mm-hmm. says he knows that sex in the fantasy suite is not going to happen. Like in a preview, like when he's by himself, he's yeah, like, oh, right. I know Hannah. Sex, it just isn't going to happen. And I'm like, dude, we know I know that one definitely won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just don't feel like he knows her. So anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. he says, though, to her, to her face, he says if she has sex with one or multiple guys, he wants to remove himself from the relationship. God. That, ooh, wow. Man. So property. Bad. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He, she says property. Yeah, right. It's Can't just Can't be that, tainted in his eyes. That's tainted. Yeah. It's a... Very old. So very gross. Very old. Very Such old. Such like a, like a dumb ass, chast way, blah, puritanical other words it's so gross i don't have words for it (laughs) it's gross. such a bad bad logic and then hannah beast comes out Mm. and she says how dare i be judged by a man yeah how dare she how dare he how dare he judge her my husband would never say that to me Mm. and then she probably says i've had sex and honestly jesus still loves me Mm. sing it love it love it that'd that'd be the church i go to (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh. Love it. Um, so, and then she admits to him, she admits to fucking in a windmill twice. Mm-hmm. And he looks completely baffled yeah. by this. Yeah. And I'm like, right. dude, you really want to talk? I mean, yeah. Are you watching the same show, dude? <laughs> um, and it shows her sending him off with her just longly just flipping him off as yep. he like drives away, which yep. is great television. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think... I, I, we, I think we've talked about this a little bit off air, but I feel like you are can you seem to say that this means that Luke is like definitely off the show after this point. I mean, he could come back. I don't think she's going to accept him back. I mean, this to That's me true. means he's not the one. Yeah, he doesn't win this show. I don't think he does either. But I he do think back. he comes back yeah. for sure. I remember. I think 
in that weird episode where they did like the the interview at the mansion in LA in like the middle of the season mm. uh like they talked about like they showed some clips from later in the season and they said like there's some cl- conversation between Chris and Hannah where Chris says like he's here and he has a ring and he honestly thinks he, you're like, he's going to be your husband or something like that. And I bet that's Luke. I bet he gets kicked off and the cameras follow him and he goes like, I'm going crazy. I was wrong. Blah, blah, blah. I shouldn't have said all that stuff. And he's going to come back with a, with a ring. And then she's going to be like, nah, dude, I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm Gucci. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm Gucci. I'm going to go hang out with Jed. Um, yeah. Which is another bummer. Um, <laughs> but a different topic. A um, different topic. But I think it's an interesting move by producers. Yeah, I do agree. Because I don't, he's not going to win. I think it's a spoiler. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of wonder why. I think their theory is like, I think they know he's kind of getting on everyone's nerves yep. at this point to the I point agree. where it's like, I want to stop watching. And so that they're like, it ends. Yeah, right. Here's right. a teaser that it ends. We're ultimately going to shit on this dude. Like we're ultimately going to make get him there. look bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, even worse because I, I mean they've already made him look pretty bad throughout the show. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I like. I am really, really, really excited to see like how that conversation goes because we've seen snippets of it, right? We've seen a lot of snippets, but that means that there's like a lot more to do, and like it's. I I think that. I think that like whatever conversation they have about sex could be like very illuminating for the like the two of them and like could reveal a lot about them and I don't know it's going to it's going to be an interesting fantasy suites week very excited for it very excited all right. Well, what are you looking forward to this week? That's what oh, I was dang like it. to wrap it up. I, I knew that I was supposed to do this. I never think I of it. I'm thinking of it didn't right now. Do it. Um <laughs> Got mine. Gosh, what am I looking forward to this week? Uh, uh, this is not a good sign. No, it's not a good sign. I have to work this weekend, and I'm not looking forward to it. Um, Are you looking forward to Sunday? Because you don't you I'm might looking, not have to work. I'm looking forward to Sunday when I don't have to work, and I am uh, also probably going to end up watching. Uh, oh, actually, here's what I'm looking forward to this week. Here we go. We got to. I it. was going to make a wrestling point, but I'm going to make a different wrestling point. Great. I just bought tickets to go see uh, a wrestling event in Chicago in November, and I'm going to go see one of my best friends yeah. and my brother in Chicago in November, and I'm very, very excited for that. Hell yeah! So it's not this weekend. I'm not. It's this week, but I'm excited to continue planning that trip. Etc. Perfect. Perfect. Great. What are you looking forward to this week, Kenzie? Um, it is my niece's first birthday. Oh, that's so great! And I'm so excited. That's gonna be one. wonderful. That's so exciting. So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. That's a lot to look forward to. Well, always think about what you're looking forward to. It's important to be positive. And thank you, um, ladies and male feminists, for listening. I will see you guys next week.